Anger is not bad or good in and of itself. It's the context that makes it helpful or not helpful. But if you have the vitality to harness your fire and then to put it into the energy of your life in a more creative way, then fire can be very useful. Anger even can be very useful. We can use anger to purify our own uh, unhelpful habits. I'm fed up with myself like that. Sometimes that's a form of self-love too. We are emerging from this pandemic and we are experiencing more anxiety, uncertainty, perhaps anger. What sort of strategies and advice can you offer to help people work through these emotions? Well, do, do Kundalini yoga. <laughs> <laughs> that could help. Yeah. <laughs> the first thing is to feel them and to endeavor to try not to wish them away. Right. Of course, uh, that's normally our first impulse, though, is, is if we're having challenging emotions, which we all do sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah. to be able to experience them as not innately negative, but something that has also a positive side. It has a potentiality to have a positive side and to consider that, to consider that as a possibility at first. That doesn't mean we're going to skip the uncomfortable. That's why I say the first thing is to do, if you're feeling upset, feel upset. Allow ourselves to feel upset. To it, Sometimes, especially for those of us involved in like self-growth work or spiritual work, this type of thing, we're not making room for us to feel, For if I feel angry, to feel angry. If I right. feel sad, to feel sad and to leave space for the humanness of who we are and for what we are. And that's the first step of metabolization of any emotion is to actually, first step is to not be in denial, <laughs> is, to, is to actually be in acceptance of, I feel lousy. Now you have access to that energy. You have access to the energy of that state of emotional energy. Now, what we don't want to do is to get stuck there. We don't want to get stuck in feeling lousy, but that can happen if we're not being accepting of it. And right. so then we're constantly kind of subconsciously pushing it away. Is that, no, I want my life to be good. I don't want my life to be bad. Right. It, this is hard work, though, and there's, there's layers upon layers. This is, this is one thing that meditation helps, is it helps to kind of open the field of our sense of awareness so we can see more of this and feel more of this more clearly, even if just for a few minutes a day, to recognize that there's some types of medicines in life that must be bitter. And there's certain, there's certain things that you can only get from bitter medicine. Right. And of course, there's certain things that you can only get from the sweet medicines. But these are the two polarities of each other, bitter and sweet. Sweet is the antithesis of, of bitter and vice versa. This right. is Ayurveda. And so, and so if you give a little child uh, on your pinky sweet taste, a little baby, mm -hmm. they'll, t they'll like it. But if you put a little bitter on, on your pinky and give it to the little infant, they will not like it. <laughs> they'll push <laughs> right. it away. As we get older, though, we have to learn to take bitters. And this is both literally and metaphorically. Right. Because what it taste is to the body, emotion is to the mind. Mm -hmm. So if you, have, if you have a pungent taste, it would be like a hot, spicy, fiery taste, a fiery emotion like anger. Right. So anger is not bad or good in and of itself. It's the context that makes it helpful or not helpful creative or destructive. Sometimes if you need to get out and march in the street, for instance, or you need to stand up for yourself in some way, you need that fire right. to, be able to, to be able to express yourself so you can be felt and heard. Now, if that's being done in a, in a contained way where you're using the fire as opposed to the fire is dominating you and it's creating impulsive explosiveness, well, impulsive explosiveness is going to be more destructive but if you have the vitality to harness your fire and then to put it into the energy of your life in a more creative way, then fire can be very useful. Anger even can be very useful. We can right. use anger to purify our own uh, unhelpful habits. I'm fed up with myself like that. Sometimes that's a form of self-love too. But we shouldn't be only fed up with ourselves. It should come out of love. 
So this is a type of starting points, perhaps. I don't know if that's helpful, but this is how I think about it. Yeah, I love it so, so much. That's really beautifully said. So let's chat a little bit about Ayurveda, you know, moving into that, being that it's one of the world's oldest holistic healing systems. How can we really utilize this to optimize our well-being? Where where does even somebody start when it comes to Ayurveda? (laughs) Well, it just depends. They can start by the normal starting point, or I would say the most common starting point, I should say. My starting point, I was trying to heal myself. Right. So then you learn that one of the unique things about Ayurveda is that nothing's right for everyone, but everything's right for someone. So what's going to be healthy for me is not exactly what's going to be healthy for you necessarily in many cases. Right. So there's these this concept of three primary body slash mind types your body type your ayurvedic body type but it really should be body mind type this is the body and the mind are one thing this there right. we're one human organism the mind the body its energy so we separate them f- for practical purposes of understanding and talking about them but your blood is part of your psyche your muscles are part of your psyche if you have low blood sugar and then you feel like the whole world is collapsing around you and everything is going to hell, then all of a sudden you ate lunch and everything was better. <laughs> right. So, so this is all the body and the mind are one thing in, in, in probably the most important way. So there's three body-mind types and they're, they're called vata, pitta, and kapha. And it's a way of really describing how each of us has a unique nature and how each of us are made up of really the five essential elements of earth, water, fire, air, and space. So if someone has more of what they call a vata body type, that person more generally will have a thinner body structure. They'll be naturally thinner. They'll have more of a like an oval, longer shaped face structure face structure, longer extremities, fingers, thinner nose bridge, usually thinner eyebrows, thinner hair in general, thinner skin in general. They tend to be more enthusiastic people naturally. They tend to have a more of a lightness of being naturally. Uh, They can tend towards more anxiousness and worry and anxiety, the colder emotions. This is air and ether elements. On the opposite side of that, you have earth and water, which makes what we call the kapha type body. That's more of a stockier person. They tend to have shorter extremities, shorter fingers, wider nose bridge, thicker lips, thicker hair, thicker skin, but more stocky. They tend to be bigger bone, whereas the vata body type will more, more... frequently have a difficult time putting on weight the kapha body type has a more difficult time getting uh uh, losing weight more easily gains weight that's why he said one friend they can't they can't eat enough to put weight on and the other person's like lord have mercy how is that like i'm just can't keep it off right we're all different Mm -hmm. and so that that kapha person they tend to have more sweeter emotions yes sweet and devotional, they can be be really the most steady of people, actually, and consistent of people. But sometimes they're hard to get going. They also can tend towards complacency or more the heavy emotions or lethargic, this type of thing. Once you get them right. going, they're going to be real consistent for you. And then in the middle, you have the fiery ones, the pitta type body, mind. And this is more moderate. Uh, body structure in moderate size uh, extremities, bone structure, muscle tissue, fat tissue, but they tend to have more of an intensity to them, deeper set eyes, kind of like I have, and and tend to be highly intelligent people, really good leadership qualities, this type of thing, but can tend towards anger, can tend towards the hotter emotions, irritability, frustration. So those are the three main body types, vata, pitta, and kapha. And not all of us are just each one. Usually it's somebody's uh, predominantly pitta with secondary kapha, like right. me, or predominantly vata with se- secondarily pitta, like that. So the first thing in Ayurveda is to learn that. Like on our website, we have a quiz people can take, and it'll give you a pretty good idea of what is what is your body type. And then there a video comes on where I tell you kind of what it means and how it might be useful. 
and then we have all sorts of stuff that people can do if they want to learn more.